Swiss darning is a really great way to hide your ends when you're adding different yarns. If you're using the same color of yarn and you run out of yarn and have to join a new ball, the best way to do that is to actually spit splice. But if you're changing colors or if you're using a yarn that can't be spliced like cotton, weaving in your ends this way will probably be the most uh, even and flat way of, of weaving them in. They're going to be less likely to come out this way. So for Swiss darning, it's essentially the same as duplicate stitch. But in the case of weaving in your ends, you want to do it on the wrong side of the fabric. In this case, it's the reverse stockinette side. Now I'm showing this over two different colors so you can see very clearly the path that each color takes. So when you change yarns and you change colors, you're going to want to weave the ends in, in in the opposite direction in which you began to knit them or ended knitting them. So in this case, the green ended here and I'm going to continue the green in this direction instead of weaving the, the end back in on itself. So this is going to go over the white, the white is going to go over the green. The first thing you have to do is close the little hole that you get. So you go in to your next stitch and you see where that next piece of yarn goes through each stitch on the row above and below. You're going to follow that exact path. So when it goes up through this stitch, you pass your yarn through, goes over and down through the next stitch, and then back down through the first. And then that process repeats. You're basically just following the path of the same row of stitching that you're covering. Now you don't want to pull too tight or you'll get a constriction on the front and it'll actually look a little bit lumpy as well. But on the back, it'll look just like a slightly raised area. You almost won't even be able to see it. What's great about this as well is that this method matches the stretch of the fabric itself, which means you don't have to worry about the constriction factor of, say, doing something on a diagonal, and you don't have to worry about when you stretch the fabric seeing your ends through the front. So when you've woven in one end as far as you'd like it to go, you pick up the other end, and you essentially do the same thing just in the opposite direction. So this was where we began, this, was, this had been the little hole, and this piece of yarn goes under this stitch and up through this one, and this is where the green yarn ended, and again you just follow that row of stitching, up through here, back through this top stitch, and of course in the case of darning and Kitchener stitch and anything that does this sort of follow the leader type of uh, stitching, you always go through every stitch twice. Once up, once down. Once you've woven that end into your satisfaction, you can break the yarn off, leaving a short tail if you'd like. The best thing to do is give it a stretch, make sure that as much slack as you need to have in that seam is in there. From the front side, it's barely noticeable. 